Good afternoon. Uh, we're here to talk about our new MT50E Freightliner custom chassis, all electric vehicle. Uh, it is based on our MT55 chassis platform, and what we've done is we've replaced the powertrain with an all electric system. We are utilizing the Proterra battery packs. We're using du dual battery packs for a total of 226 kilowatts of power. Uh, we've mated that with a Dana E axle. For the drivetrain. Uh, it is a DC charge system. It'll fast charge in three hours on a DC charge. Uh, we can come down and take a little bit of a look at it. You can see how we package the batteries inside the frame rails. So we've maintained open space on both sides of the frame. So those applications where there needs to be storage compartments, those types of things, we've kept that frame free. It will also include our new OptiView instrument cluster, which is an LED instrument cluster. Um, this will come standard with a reverse camera as well as a 360 degree camera that will actually display in the center of the instrument panel when it's activated. So it gives, we're, we're bringing as much of the information that a driver typically uses into the instrument panel itself. They'll be able to tie in GPS systems so that that will display in the instrument panel as well. So. Um, but again, back to utilizing the MT55 structure. So it's the same chassis structure, same suspension structures. The, the long life components that we have on our chassis, we've kept in this design. Mm. And uh, when is this going to be available? Uh, we order? are targeting right now the first quarter of 2021 to have production. Great. And um, you know, for, for an application like FedEx Ground, so maybe with like an 18 foot body Correct. doing a lot of stop and go, what would you expect the range to be? Um, conservatively, we're looking at about 120 mile range. Conservatively? Conservatively. Great. Um, obviously range will vary based on driver conditions, how the driver drives it, uh, temperatures will affect it a bit as well. So um, you always caveat mileage, but right now it's estimated conservatively at 120 mile range. That's awesome. That's great. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. We have Lisa here from Proterra. Can you tell us a little bit about charging? Yes, I can tell you about charging and I can also give you some tips on our battery. Okay. And why uh, safety is our most important thing and I think that's important in your decision making as well. So the Proterra batteries, uh, the battery technology has been on the road for 10 years. It is proven and it is safe. It's in our Proterra transit buses. Okay. And we've sold over 800 Proterra transit buses. And there are a couple elements of safety. One is, as you'll see here, we have a 10 millimeter aluminum ballistics grade protection, protective enclosure around the battery pack. So we have both external, uh, which is good for all the different elements outside. It's been through testing in New York City in the transit. Of, uh, we had to blow up manhole covers and make sure it went through the test. So it's really oh, wow. the outside. The inside of our battery packs have 70 sensors. We have a very sophisticated battery thermal management system. Uh, we have a technology uh, in the design. We have several in-house. Our battery packs are all made in-house. Okay. And we have several engineers on our team with expertise, many of them from Tesla. And the most important thing in, that we have in our batteries is passive propagation resistance, PPR. And that means if there ever were to be any thermal events in a cell, in one cell, it would not cascade to the others. Mm -hmm. And we have fault codes, all our batteries are connected to the team. If there ever were anything, um, we would know immediately and it would not cascade. So you wouldn't have to um, worry about that. And we, I'm, I'm happy to say that we had the batteries out there um, 10 years and um, and, and there haven't been any major issues, which I think can make you also all feel very good. Okay. We have a couple of people actually watching this live, and someone just oh. asked, um, is there a regenerative capability yes, on the chassis? Yes, definitely. So regenerative braking is really going to help gain range. And when you teach a driver how to use with regenerative braking, um, they can gain anywhere from 10 to 15, 20% more range. So as part of the training, it's, it's very fun. We'll have people in the transit field where they'll 
do the same route and the drivers will test each other to see who could get energy back. So unlike an internal combustion engine where you're constantly losing range and energy. Show us uh, the, the charger, charger that you yes, have set up. I'm happy to show right. <laughs> Yeah, I sprung that on you. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, hi everyone. All right, so this is the Proterra charger. And I was just going to make me. This shows you what it looks like in a different fleet. So this is just the dispenser. Okay. This is the MT50E is DC charging compatible. And uh, this is this works with a 60 kilowatt charger. And let me show you of a picture of it with the bus. It'll make it make it look a lot more interesting. I want to also take the plug out. So if you see here, this is an example of a bus. So we have a power control system mm -hmm. and then we have a dispenser. And they can be located up to 50 feet apart. Okay. And you can attach up to four dispensers to one 60 kilowatt power control system. The important thing to know is the 60 kilowatt means it's about a three hour, 3.3 hour charge for the MT50E. It, this, uh, you do not need to use a Proterra charger. This is compatible with any J1772 plug, mm -hmm. DC charging. This is the North America and European model. So for instance, my Chevy Bolt can be charged on this as well. So, and this is what this, this looks like here. And I think that Ron had said earlier that, what, what's the charge time on, on this with 3. the DC? 3.3 hours. 3.3 so, hours for a so full charge. So this is 226 kilowatt hours. So the usable capacity is around 200 divided by 60 and you get 3.3. Sam teaching you how to, yes. to calculate <laughs> charge time so that you guys can independently evaluate different charges on the market. Right on. So 3.3 hours for a full charge. For a full charge. And then conservatively 120 miles of range from that. Yeah, very conservatively. But the thing about range is if you have the heater on, it takes more energy from the battery than air conditioning. So the heater can, can affect it. Also, how the driver is, um, is, is a big effect as well. What the route is um, can also have a huge effect. So I think, I think it could get a much better range, and it probably can, and how much freight is it, it is in the vehicle. So we're being very conservative, I think. I don't want to say a number, but it can get sure. much, I think you can get much higher. Than the 120, but we're just saying that to be conservative. Great. And and we also it's important to look at the route and just you know in the planning to make sure it's it's, it's a good fit. But I think for the walk-in van and a lot of the delivery thing, it's a fantastic application electric because it's mm -hmm. a it's a predetermined route. Predetermined route, yeah. Um, you know, we have a lot of customers who are driving 100 miles or less in a day. And a big portion of that is, well, almost all of it is stop and go. So the regenerative braking, oh, you know, it's a perfect fantastic. application. Yeah. yeah, so you'll be getting energy back. The more you, the more you take your, your, the more you're braking, the more you get back. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, it's fun. I have a Chevy Bolt. So I take a certain way home from the highway to my home in California, and I end up with six miles extra because <laughs> I have to break down the hill. So it, it is fun to, to learn and see and, and <clears throat> How, when do you when do you put your you know take your foot off the pedal and it's, it's fun yeah if I'm not mistaken electric vehicles like this actually get better range if you're doing stop and go versus straight on the highway it's right? fantastic that you're using the braking yeah it's really good yeah and it, and it, another thing I think is important you'll see the batteries are between the frame rails mm -hmm. it's a very safe location for the uh, between the frame rails, so both for gravity, for a lot of different things, when the, when the van is empty, mm -hmm. I think it's a good center of gravity for the location. And you actually have two battery packs in here. That's the size of one. The, our light box over there is, is what it is, the exact dimensions of it. It's like the size of taller than a door. You're talking about this yeah. gray yep. sign here? Yep. Okay. So that's what it looks like, and you have two of those under here double stacked. They're 113 kilowatt hours each.
Lisa, we had someone ask. Yeah. How much is one of those DC chargers? So the 60 kilowatt charger mm -hmm. with um, one dispenser is 47,500. Okay. With, um, I have to look it up. You can also get it with four dispensers. So you could uh, put four bands in and go home for the night. And in the morning they would charge sequentially and be ready to go. And charging sequentially is a big deal, right? Because you can have one truck, which will get to a full charge, so you can take it and start using it before the second one starts charging, right? Exactly. And you always get the fast charge, the 60. There are others out there that are only compatible up to 19 kilowatt charge time, power time, and that can take eight or nine hours mm. to charge a vehicle. This one, it would take a lot longer if you had a smaller one. So the fast charge. Um, also, our chargers were working on smart charge management. So I was, as I was mentioning to you, you want to charge when you have the lowest rate. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that's later in the evening from 10 p.m. on, depending on where in the country you are. Every utility has a different rate. And Proterra works really closely, our Proterra energy team, with the utilities and helping customers understand when is the best time to charge, how to avoid high demand charges, and to get the best time of use charge. And that's a big deal for our customers, like we were talking about earlier, especially in FedEx ground. A lot of them are going to be finishing their day at 4, 5, 6, 7 o'clock, and that's when electricity is most expensive, is right. in the evenings when people are home watching TV, turning on the lights at home, you know, air conditioners or heaters, etc. Exactly. So we work really closely with the customers to make sure that the... Um, that we can charge the, the fleet as they need to, number one, that it's ready to go in the morning when you need it with the full charge or whatever you need, and that number two, that for the economics, to make it as cost effective as possible with the electricity. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. All Appreciate right, it. Thanks.